Hello, my name is Lena Shah, and I'm a developer at Oracle working on the content management headless samples. Today, I am going to show you how to build a minimal sample in Angular using the Oracle Content and Experience as a headless CMS. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do is clone this repository in GitHub. This is a universal Angular minimal sample that is already set up to use Oracle Content Management. Open a command prompt and type in git clone, clone and the URL of this repository. Now change to the newly created directory. Open the sample with the code editor of your choice. I will be using Visual Studio Code. The first thing we want to do is open a terminal and install the dependencies for this project. For this, type in npm install. While the dependencies are getting installed, let's take a look at some of the files for this sample. Note the package.json file, which contains some scripts that can help with building and starting the app. For this tutorial, we will be using the build and the start script. Also note the dependencies section. This lists all the dependencies of the sample. Note the dependency on the Oracle Content Management SDK. Next, let's take a look at the .env file, which is the configuration file. We use environment variables to store configuration information about the Oracle Content Management Server. The server that is listed in the server URL is a public Oracle Content Management Server. The channel token is what will be used by Angular to authenticate into our Oracle Content Management instance. One thing that's really important is to ensure that you configure your cross-origin resource sharing to avoid any distributed denial of service attack. It's best not to check in this information as part of your source control code because attackers may use it to attempt to access your OCE instance. Now that the dependencies are installed, let's start a build. Type in npm. Run build. This script first runs the client build and then runs the server build. It builds the dist folder and it also creates the browser and server folders underneath it. These folders need to be deployed on the server machine before you start the server application. To spin up a live local development server, type in npm one start. This will spin up a development server at port 8080. Let's see this sample live in action in the browser. As you can see here, our headless angular minimal sample accesses a content item of the asset type minimal main, which consists of a header logo, a footer logo, and a list of pages. A page is of the asset type minimal page, and it has a list of sections. The contact us page has three sections whereas the home page has two sections. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code which is making all this possible.
All of the source code resides in the source folder. Let's first take a look at source scripts server config utils .ts file. Note that the first line imports the clients from the content management SDK. This file also defines a method called getClient, which instantiates a new client that will enable one to access the content stored in Oracle Content Management Server. Here we are using the environment variables that were defined in the .env file to create the client. This method getClient is used by methods in services.js. Let's take a look at that. Here you will find methods that encapsulate calls to the content SDK and return the results back to the Angular components. For example, here's a method which uses the getItem method on the client to get details about the item and then passes it back to the component. Here's another method which fetches the item called minimum main and returns the results back to the component. In short, this file contains all the content SDK calls the sample needs to render the data. In Angular, components are written in TypeScript and define a template that defines the view. These templates contain ordinary HTML, Angular directives, and binding markup, which enable Angular to adjust the HTML before it is rendered. The app module is located in source app appmodule.ts file. It bootstraps the application with the app component. This file defines the different routes for our application. In our site, we want to provide two routes, the root page and any other page, which is of the content um, type post minimal page. Note that this page route expects a slug to be passed in the URL. The second route here defines the resolver used to get all the data required for the route before the routes component is created. The page data resolver defined in this route appears in the resolvers folder. This resolver makes a call to a method in services.js that we saw earlier to obtain the data for the page. All the pages have a header, a footer, and sections. A page is rendered by the page component located at app page page component.ts file. In ng on init, this component will get the data from the active route. This was populated by the page data resolver. The markup for this component is located in page component.html, which is in the same folder. This component uses the header, the footer, and section subcomponents. These components are located in the corresponding folders. Let's revisit in the browser once again. As you can see here, this is the home page that is being rendered by the page component that we saw earlier. And the header, footer, and section components that are being rendered by the corresponding components. All of this content is coming directly from our Oracle Content Management Server. That's it from my end. Thank you for watching this video about how you can use Angular 
in conjunction with Oracle Content Management as a headless CMS to build and implement a minimal app. You can find more samples like this on our headless Oracle Content Management documentation pages. Have fun building.